you're just walking around one day, minding your own business, don't think you're creating any trouble, don't think you're very suspicious, and all of a sudden the police officer comes up to you and says, stop, I want to talk to you. And then they pat you down. And whatever they might find, they pull out and they look at it. And the question that I guess this uh, incident raises, oftentimes for, for people of color especially, is, is stop and frisk legal? So I'm Dan Capper. I'm a professor at Fordham Law School, and I'll provide you with a quick uh, and uh, down and dirty explanation of this particularly complicated area. One of the problems of is stop and frisk legal is the term stop and frisk is kind of used by people who really kind of don't know what they're talking about, like in the presidential debate, for example. Stop and frisk was ruled unconstitutional in New York because it, it largely singled out black and Hispanic young men. No, it, you're wrong. Uh, it went before a judge who was a very against police judge. Stop and frisk was found to be unconstitutional. And in part because it was ineffective. It did not do what it needed to do. Stop and frisk has been established as a legal practice if certain conditions are met. And that's by the Supreme Court in the famous case of Terry versus Ohio. What the court determined is that if officers had to have what is called probable cause, the standard required to make an arrest for street encounters and street investigations, then a lot of crime would go undetected and there would be a risk to the public. So what uh, the court did is basically invent uh, a standard of proof called reasonable suspicion, which would allow officers to actually stop somebody's movement and uh, basically determine whether reasonable suspicion actually could lead to probable cause, to basically ask uh, questions, where are you going, what are you doing, who are you doing it with, where you been, doing warrant checks, doing identification checks and the like, for a limited period of time. It's not an arrest, it's, it's what's called a stop. But attendant to the stop is the frisk. And the frisk is for self-protection. If the officer has reasonable suspicion that the uh, person is armed and dangerous, not just armed, but armed and dangerous, then the officer can search for those weapons that are on the person and uh, also on whatever the person is carrying. And also, as it happens, in the passenger compartment of the car, if a person is stopped in their car. Upon reasonable suspicion, these searches can occur. So is stop legal? The answer is yes, if the officer has reasonable suspicion that, that the uh, suspect, the person, is uh, about to commit or has committed a crime. Second, a frisk is legal, again, upon a condition that the officer has reasonable suspicion that the person whom they have stopped is armed and dangerous. Now, those are the basics. It's a lot more complex than that, but the, the answer is stop and frisk is legal. However, there have been situations in which officers employ stop and frisk in an illegal fashion. And that is the issue that came up in the major lawsuit against the New York City Police Department about their stop and frisk program. The problem with the stop and frisk program as found by the judge, she found that the stop and frisk was being used selectively, that there was actually an equal protection problem in the use of the stop and frisk program. That is to say, it was being used to discriminate against minorities, particularly young African American men. Secondly, the court found that many of these stops and frisks were occurring without reasonable suspicion. They were occurring just because, for example, a young man happened to be around a, pro a housing project at a particular time or at a particular place at a particular time. So essentially what the court found was that the quote stop and frisk program, not the, not the idea of stop and frisk, but the stop and frisk program was unconstitutional as applied by the New York City Police Department and basically that program was, has now been abandoned. But that doesn't mean that stop and frisk has been abandoned. It just means that stop and frisk, when legally conducted, is a permissible police practice. Uh, this is Dan Capper from Fordham Law School, and I'm happy to be here to talk on behalf of Talks on Law.